I've always described my husband Derek as a bit of an introvert, but that's not entirely correct. He's gregarious, funny, and charming, but you really have to break past an initial layer of shyness to get to see the real him. <laughs> I laugh, because if we hadn't started talking through text first, I doubt that I would have discovered that part of him. He really brought his whole self to our date, and it was history after that. He had his core group of friends for a while, but after we moved out of state for work, he has definitely struggled. I always made friends pretty easily and love meeting people. He was fine for a time, coming to events and hanging out with friends, but after a year or so, he said he started to miss having a regular friend group of his own. His other friends would visit, but they were far, and I sympathized. I encouraged him to get out there in some hobby groups of his, and to be fair, he really did, but nothing resulted in anything long term outside the days of the group meetups. Oh, didn't you say he always wanted to learn how to DJ? My friend Cindy exclaimed. She was one of the three women I met up with regularly for book club. Yeah, I think he makes really good playlists, but I think that obsession comes from what he thinks was a missed opportunity. What's stopping him now? Sarah asked as she sat back and brought her wine glass to her lips. Mostly money. We're just in catch-up mode from school right now, so not a lot of extra spending cash. I thought so, but that's why I asked, Cindy said. Because I know of a club that meets up every Friday night, brings their equipment and practice. My sister went once, but said that it wasn't her scene. Knowing her, she probably took a little longer than she preferred to catch on, but since most of the equipment is provided, that's a major barrier gone. I was pretty excited at the news, but that paled in comparison to the glee on his face. His first night out, he couldn't stop talking about the group, how talented everyone was, and how the whole mood of the room changed when he got the chance to practice one of his playlists. Honestly, they were welcoming, but a bit distant when I first came, but I think I really won them over. They even meet once a month for dinner. One of the guys said a lot of people usually disappear after the first month, but they hoped that I would come back and become a regular member. For the next couple weeks, things were great. I saw a shift in his mood for the better, and he carried himself with so much more confidence. I went ahead and told him that we would forgo our usual date night so that he could go to the first dinner with his new friends. I think he went through multiple outfits that night before finally I just grabbed a button up off the floor. Eh, selfishly, miss, it was my favorite one of his. Don't stress about clothes. They obviously like you for you and your taste in music. Besides, if it was all about your clothes, they would have kicked you out a long time ago. I chuckled and gave him a kiss. You just don't understand the geek chic look that I'm going for. Not everyone understands fashion. It's okay. Derek smirked and returned my kiss, then headed out. He checked in later that night to let me know that they had talked him into going to a small venue where other musicians, DJs, and professionals frequented. I wasn't familiar, but I recognized I didn't know much about the underground music scene here. Derek returned at around 2 a.m., a bit disheveled, but he had clearly had fun. A couple of his friends had driven him home and helped him to the front door. A striking couple, the man introduced himself as Jamie and the woman, who I assumed to be his girlfriend, she said that she was Natalie. She wrapped herself around Jamie's arm as soon as they got Derek to the door and apologized for letting him have a bit too much fun. I told him it was more than fine and reached out to help him inside. Before he crossed our entryway, Jamie grabbed his arm and dropped keys into his hand. Don't want to forget this. We carpooled and your car should still be at the restaurant. Thought it would be less of a hassle since it's closer for you guys than whatever club we ended up at. I thanked them and could smell the faint scent of alcohol as I helped Derek inside. He headed toward our bedroom and he recounted the parts of the night that he could remember. I noticed as he talked that he kept massaging between his neck and right shoulder. I asked him to let me see and gasped. Jesus, what happened to you, Derek? This is horribly bruised. If someone tried to give you a hickey, they did an awful job. 
There was even specks of blood on his collar. Derek looked at me confused. He honestly had no idea anything was even there other than that he thought it was sore from a drunk incident. That place was pretty rowdy, and I do vaguely remember a sharp pain and my vision spinning. Before I knew it, uh, what happened, Natalie had sat me down on one of the couches. People were pretty riled up and tried to get me to celebrate someone's birthday or something, but Jamie got them to leave me alone while I got it together. I was relieved he was okay, but didn't feel great that he was hurt for God knows what reason and decided to leave it alone so we could get some rest. The next few days were definitely odd to say the least. On the first day after his night out, Derek could barely keep his eyes open and kept complaining about how bright everything was. He was usually an all blinds fully open as much as possible kind of guy, much to my chagrin. I thought it was also odd because it wasn't particularly bright out that morning, but I passed it off as a hangover. The next day, he had trouble staying awake during the day. Derek was never a morning person and always a bit of a night owl, but this sluggishness seemed extreme. He was fully awake by the evening throughout the early morning. Since we weren't sure what was going on yet, he was able to get accommodations to work his new odd hours. Since he worked from home, it wasn't too much trouble. It would have to do until the doctor could come back with any useful information. On the third night, we were out on a date, but he didn't eat very much. He said that he was fine with a couple drinks and an appetizer he barely ate any of. On the fourth night, his normal chestnut skin had become washed and dulled of color. Even his usually bright brown eyes had lost some of their bluster, but were simultaneously sharper, more focused. It was like he watched where we were heading instead of where you currently were. On the fifth night, Derek had accidentally broke every glass he held while doing dishes, and on the sixth, he started to complain of how dry his throat was. No matter how much he drank and tried to eat, he said he still didn't feel satisfied. It was on the seventh night that his friends showed up to pick him up for another jam session. They had done this before, and I wasn't too keen on him going since we still had no idea what was going on, but... It also seemed like a night out would do him some good. Honestly, I also felt like I needed a break to decompress and think of what we could do to finally find out what was happening. I fell asleep faster than I intended, and I was startled awake by an urgent rapping at our door. I went downstairs and saw Derek through the peephole and opened it. I covered my mouth in horror. Blood stained Derek's shirt, and as my mind came back, I saw it was on his face as well. He braced himself on the door frame and said, Hey, can I come in? I don't know what it was, but despite my love for this man, something visceral in my body kept my mouth shut. I just stared for a few moments and slowly closed the door. And he knocked again. Please, Trish, let me in. I just want to talk. I just... Look, I know this sounds weird, but if you come to the club with me, you can find out what's going on with me. They said that they'd make an exception for you and lay you inside. I had no idea what he was talking about. I barely heard what he had said over the voice in my head screaming for me to keep him outside. I sat on the ground and stared ahead as he kept knocking and trying to convince me to go with him. I finally found it in me to creep back upstairs. I thought I was quiet, didn't make a sound, but he raised his voice for me hey. not to go. I'm sitting in our room now and I'm absolutely terrified. I don't know what to do. I drew our blinds closed because not long after being up here. I heard a soft tapping on our bedroom window. I turned and saw Derek, effortlessly hanging from the outside wall, his eyes no longer pleading but sharp and hungry. I couldn't think while those eyes dissected me. I don't know what to do. The voice in my head telling me to keep him outside is getting quieter, 
while his voice is even more prominent. Trish, love, tell me I can come in. Let me in, Trish. Let me in.